Hey guys, how about something a little different? I've got an issue with this dehumidifier. I think I might have shown in a video a while back on alley shopping. Yeah, I scored this dehumidifier out of the alley behind our place. Somebody was moving out and they left two of these behind. I honestly didn't know for sure what it was when I grabbed it, but I figured, hey, it's electronic, it's free, might as well. Well, it turned out to be a rather nice dehumidifier. I think the model is KM50, which retails for something like 250 bucks. So, uh, definitely has some value to it, and it worked great last summer. It was like a life changer down here in the basement. This year, when I went to turn it on, not so much love. Things looked okay when I first turned it on, but then when I went to cycle, well, you'll see what happens. Yeah, not so good. And uh, it'll just keep doing this, or sometimes it'll just shut off. So, kind of something Morse code. I mean, it's saying, help me, help me. Uh, I took a bit of a look online, and I didn't see anybody with quite the same trouble. And the controls don't respond, so I've got to unplug it. Uh, but what I suspect uh, uh, could very well be an issue is corrosion. This is a very humid environment these things typically work in. There's a water collection tank down below, and there's condensing coils and stuff. So I'm going to pop this open and take a look there. Just shut itself off. It could just be some corroded connections, or maybe some corroded components. Let's find out. It took me a little while to figure out how to take it apart. Turns out there are some screws on the back. That was easy enough to figure out, but there are also... Uh, one on each side. They were covered by little decorative bits of plastic. Get those out. And uh, let's see what's inside. So these are basically air conditioners. Uh, that being a compressor. And somewhere in here will be some condensing coils and then it collects liquid in the bottom. You can either fill this removable tray up and empty it periodically or use that tube there and run it to a drain and let this thing run all the time. So I believe the control is in here. Huh. Looks like there are some instructions. <laughs> so there are disassemble instructions inside of the unit. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I also notice there's a wiring diagram on the back. Explain the wiring harness. So let me put this back together. So this is the control unit. Let me pop this open and take a look at disconnecting things. So I don't see a connector here. I just see some wires going inside of this housing. Maybe they disconnected the other end, but I don't want to deal with all that if I don't have to. So. Uh, let me get this cover open and see what's inside there. Thanks to the disassembly instructions I found inside the unit, I knew I just had to remove this one screw here to get the PCB cover off. And there she is. Also a wiring diagram on the back and replacement parts list. So we got a motor, probably run and start cap. Don't think that's the issue because we don't even get that far. And then there is the main PCB, which honestly, from what I can see, looks pretty good. I'll get a flashlight look in there closer. None of these units all that old. I'll look for some date codes. This is 2016 on it. So I really don't think the caps would be bad after that short of time, but uh, maybe it's a loose connection. So I'll try wiggling some stuff and powering this thing back up if I don't see any obvious signs of trouble. Nope, still the same problem. I'm going to do a little research online and see if there are uh, any solutions for a flashing control other than to replace the whole board, which I understand is not all that cheap.
Well, unfortunately, the internet was pretty useless. I didn't find any info on a similar problem, so I figured I got nothing to lose. I might as well pull out this control module. Maybe there's a bad solder joint uh, or something. So I'm trying to get it out, and one thing I uh, one problem I've run into quickly is that some of these connectors are really, really hard to get off. Like this black one right here. The one next to it came off easily enough, but not that one. I'm going to try using some needle nose pliers. What I want to do is uh, free this up from the unit and then uh, flip the circuit board over. Okay, needle nose pliers and a little bit of leverage popped off those connectors. So I was able to get this out. And when I looked at the other side, it looks a little funky around here. Almost like that component's been replaced, but nothing fried. You no know, obvious cold solder joints. I'll examine a little more closely, maybe touch up some of these joints. Now there is another possibility, of course, that this could be just fine. And the problem could be the board under here. So notice there's no uh, microcontroller on this. And clearly this is digitally controlled somehow. So um, I believe that the assembly manual did mention there's a control board under here. That's what this ribbon cable is going to. But I have not been able to figure out how to get this open yet. I took out every screw I could see. And it kind of wants to come apart. But not quite. Alright, I finally realized I was missing two screws on the front. You can see them from the back side. And uh, then the whole front pulled off the unit. Now we can see the big radiator. That helps condense uh, all the moisture out of the air. And then it runs down into a collection tank down below. So, that allowed me to get to the control board. So there, finally, we've got a microcontroller of some sort. And curious that it's socketed. So I definitely want to make sure that that is seated firmly. Uh, otherwise this looks super clean. I mean, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, this isn't all that old. The 2016 date on that chip. And I know I haven't used it a whole lot. Don't know how much it was used before I got it, so... Uh... I really don't think age is going to be an issue on any of this, and the soldering on this looks pretty darn clean. The wires didn't seem to be pinched or anything. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make sure this IC is seated firmly. I'm going to remount this board, I'm going to put everything back together, make sure all the connections are really solid, and give it another try. Oh, and uh, for those of you wondering what controller is in here, well, as near as I can make out is it says A B O V, I think, M C eight zero F Q seven zero eight G or something like that. That is not a microcontroller family I am familiar with. I plugged it in and right away the full light started blinking, which is good. It's exactly what it should be doing because I do not have the collection bucket in place. Let's get that in there. That's also a good sign. But that is not. Hmm. It's really disappointing. If the bucket sensor is controlled by the microcontroller, or well, I was curious if I took that back out, would that bucket light come back on? But the whole thing seems to be crazy. All right, so so now what? I don't have a schematic for it. 
Uh, I could probably kind of work out what some of the voltages should be if I can look up that microcontroller and figure out it probably runs on 5 volts and hook a meter or a scope up to that 5 volt rail because if there's something wrong with the 5 volt supply then the microcontroller could flip out like it seems to be doing uh, otherwise maybe there's a power surge and there's something wrong with the controller um, which would be really hard for me to troubleshoot uh, I did find a source I believe of the boards um, in the past, you could have gotten them from parts direct from Sears, but since they're kind of, well, just went through a bankruptcy, their uh, parts ordering site doesn't really seem to be working, but I found an, another site that had them, and I think it was something like 30 or 35 bucks for the controller board, and a somewhat similar price for this board. And then with shipping and handling, and probably sales tax, it'll be something like maybe 80, 90 bucks to get both boards. I don't know if I want to sink that kind of money into it and not knowing if it will fix the problem. Uh, so I'm going to leave this video off here. If you guys have any thoughts or suggestions, please leave them in the comments while I continue to ponder my options.